Hey everybody, this is Rich and you're with Beekeeping with Rich. I'm excited this morning because I invented something yesterday. I'm a little sleep deprived because I did most of the inventing after I went to bed last night. My brain wouldn't turn off and uh, until I was completely and totally satisfied with my design. <laughs> uh, so if you look here, this is the configuration at the moment on several boxes out in the yard. I did splits a couple of weeks ago and uh, so I have reduced entrance and the water feeder here that I normally use. I don't use these for sugar. I only use this for giving my bees water. And this is where we stand and have stood for the last couple of weeks on these uh, regular eight frames. And uh, we're getting to the point, as you often do when you make a split like this, that things are starting to slow down in there. And while we're not at the point yet where we're going to be in dearth, we will be. And an axiom in beekeeping is if you wait until you need something, it's too late. You need to already have it. When dearth starts, you, when robbing starts, you need to already have it. So uh, I started, I went online yesterday. And I started looking at homemade robbing screens and what people have done. I watched the videos that were available. I, I looked at diagrams and discussions and everything else. And I was totally and completely dissatisfied with everything that I was seeing. I was like, oh, I can do that. That's okay. Certainly quick enough. But it's like, you know, I think I can do better. And I started thinking about my resources and I started thinking about the way things go and the first thing I came up with was this you see the uh, uh, reduced entrance feeder is still there you put this right in front of it I would presume one screw hole right here of course this would have you know screening across it through here, but that way they could come out through their reduced entrance up through this cutout. That's what everybody does is they space this whole thing out in a different manner and it's like, I don't understand the reason for it. <coughs> I mean, if you've ever done cutouts anywhere, you know that uh, bees can make use of very small spaces. So this, they would come out there, you know, you'd have your screen here, they would come out here, you would have the ability to close that off, and you're good to go. And I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking, well, I have a lot of compassion for the cadaver bees who have to drag the dead bodies out of the hive. And it's like, well, you know, instead of making them drag them up and out, why don't I just... make a cut to the front that way they can drag them this way and that was an aha moment and the next thing you know I'm thinking to myself well you know if I can put a quart container full of water over here and that doesn't go anywhere. What would happen if I took this and attached it directly to the back? Here. Or, to be more precise, what happens if I attach it directly to the back here? And that's where I started having trouble getting to sleep because I really wanted to run out in the garage at one in the morning and work on it. So here is the ultimate homemade robbing screen. Your reduced entrance feeder is permanently attached to the back. It slides in. You don't need to screw anything on if you're just sitting in your yard. And if you're going to use this as a transport screen, well then you have one predetermined screw hole that uh, you can put a screw in. 
you have as you do with and now you know from past videos that I love the ultimate robbing screen and my double wides one of the reasons I came up with that design was that one half of it can have the water and an entrance blocker for the rest of that side and the other side can use the ultimate robbing screen but what you can't do with the ultimate robbing screen in place is also have you know a external feeder or water or anything like that you're pretty much stuck with what you got right there uh, but with this screen you can block it completely off you can transport it oh I should mention I'm not going to talk to you about dimensions here at all because you're going to determine your own dimensions for your own screen I'm going to show you concepts with this okay if you want to make them to go all the way across well that's fine some people their fronts come out like this and down and you of course have a longer landing board and you're going to want to do something like either have a cutout or you can put a piece of wood screwed to the side of this in this position uh, to lay across the top of that if that's what you want to do you do what you need to do for your hives and hey you may have hives with two or three different configurations here and you can adapt this to any of those I haven't finished by any means uh, so at any rate you can close the whole thing off you can go ahead and put this on which is what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put these on the front and they're not going to hardly notice any difference because they're just going to keep coming in and out of the same place this will be closed if uh, later on if there's you know when we get into our summer dearth I'll be opening this this way I'll be closing this down here and I'll be making them come out up here why this little piece of sheet metal right here well you know it's funny several people were doing this but nobody actually mentioned why they were doing it obviously the reason for putting this little tacking this little piece of sheet metal to the front is so that the robber bees don't have an immediate visual right here and the bees coming up underneath here can come up but that's not the most important thing from my standpoint my hives face southeast our storms all come from the southeast our rain oftentimes is parallel it doesn't come down it comes sideways this blocks the hard rain coming into the entrance this blocks more sunlight I mean already I'm using uh, slatted racks which keep an awful lot of bounced sunlight out of the hive with this at the only entrance point even more sunlight is kept out of the hive so it keeps out the rain it keeps out the sun it uh, acts as a visual block against the robber bees so seems like a good idea to put that on there uh, maybe it's maybe you don't really need it probably don't really need it I should mention oh no I don't need to do that right now let's talk about how you make these okay the most important thing the only if you want to make these easily and quickly you need a table saw if you don't have a table saw I'm sure you can still make them but you'll just have to adapt as you adapt okay to make these the most important thing is to set your blade at three-eighths of an inch and then to make your corners here you set your fence at three quarters of an inch and that way you put your piece up against the fence bring it through and then just make a few passes from there a little bit of this jiggy number and you clean that right out you do that on both sides and you have a nice strong secure lock again this is sized for my purpose I turn it around backwards but hey you know what it fits either way because if you did your job right it fits either way uh, for my purpose I have to stop here 
I really can't go any higher because you're getting into like the handles over here and such. If you have deeps, obviously you can make these taller. I think it'd be a good idea to make them taller. Although the ultimate robbing screen is just about the same size and it works just fine. Uh, but back to it, you make your notches uh, using your fence set at three quarters of an inch, your blade set at three eighths of an inch, and just do a little bit of jiggling to clean them out. You don't need to do any cleanup work afterwards. The slightly coarse texture just makes it great for the glue. This one I will, and then when you're done with that, you move your fence out of the way, you keep your blade at three eighths of an inch. These are just made by freehanding them through the blade. If you want to put the fence over here to make your start, well, you go right ahead. But you can just freehand them through here like this to make these two cuts. And then you can turn it this way so that you now have the cut like this. That's still plenty of beef for what this is, plenty of strength. And these are all three quarter by three quarter. I should mention that when I have small pieces of wood that uh, most people would call scrap and chuck away immediately, I take those little pieces of wood, I set my fence at three quarters of an inch, and I will convert all this stuff into little three quarter inch pieces of wood, as long as it's, you know, this much or more, and just store them because three quarters of an inch is such a useful size for all kinds of things you do in beekeeping. And I have more than once, actually this little container here, I throw the little pieces into here and the bigger pieces go elsewhere. Well, as I started making these, I used up just about everything in that container. A few pieces are too short, but this is the ultimate robbing screen. Looks complicated when you just sit here and turn it like this, but when you understand how it evolved, then you can see how it works. But the most important, the uh, pardon me, the screen. screen. Okay, well, of course you have hardware cloth, which is your standard for this. But in this instance, you could just use ordinary window screen. I mean, there's plenty of support. You're just going to staple it on anyway. My own preference is for the pet screen. Three times heavier, slightly larger diameter, diameter, slightly, slightly larger size hole in it readily available in rolls. This is probably a lifetime supply of pet screen. Oh, and uh, this last weekend we had a uh, beekeeping workshop in our local club and somebody was commenting on the incredible cost of eighth inch hardware cloth. And I said, oh, I stopped buying those three foot wide sheets a long time ago. I just get the, uh, you know, eight inch rolls. And they all looked at me and went, what do you mean eight inch rolls? Well, if you go over where they keep the hardware cloth, almost no one ever has the number eight or one eighth inch hardware cloth there. But if you go over to the roofing section of the big box stores, this is soffit, uh, cloth. This is to replace, if you'll pan up, dear. Oh, that's, that's an awful lot of uh, bugs up there. But this is material for replacing the screen in your soffits. And it comes in these rolls. And it comes, depending, this came from uh, Orchard Supply. For a very short time, we had an Orchard Supply hardware store down here. And I bought a couple of rolls of this while the supply store was here. You can still get it from Orchard Supply online. If you want the regular hardware cloth. And I couldn't dig out the roll. I haven't started using it yet, but uh, they have an expanded aluminum version of this that again is only about eighth inch uh, that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's most of the time. And I find very few things in beekeeping that I can't do with this width. I mean, obviously you, you could have a four inch holes and you can cover it with this. If you just uh, run a plywood cover and cut two thirds of it out here and two thirds of it out here and roll this across it, well, that's a screened inner cover. It just has a little more reinforcing in the middle because you're overlapping two of these. 
Bees don't care. Whether you use one uninterrupted piece that sags or whether you have something in the middle which, you know, reinforces it. So let me save you a lot of money. Don't go online, which you normally have to do, and order rolls 36 inches wide by however many feet long. Just go get this stuff. Same way, you know, if you go over to the uh, roofing section, you get your thin aluminum. Now, as it happened, I happen to have some slightly thicker aluminum sheet scrap laying around, and so I use that to make these. But I guess you could use plastic, but the thin is better. But this is nothing more than a bit of this. Or you saw me do a video. I did a video on these just using this little piece of pre-cut roofing flashing to make my little awnings over the bees. And you can just cut one of these up. But either way, you take a strip of it, fold it in half, pound it down with a hammer on the end, and you're in position, I should flip it that way, to make your gate using that. Uh, one of the other things that kept me up was, okay, what's the best way to secure this on here? And it was amusing, some of the things I was coming up with in the middle of the night. You know, taking a piece of stainless steel wire, bending it in certain ways, drilling a little hole, putting it in there with some epoxy and blah, blah. And then I realized, wait a minute, all I need is a panhead screw. So the secure for, the all, for both of these doors is nothing more than a panhead screw. Uh, you, put the, you put your gate on, drop out a sixteenth or so out from it, drill a little hole, screw in a panhead screw, screw it down till you got, you know, no play in it, but it's not binding either. And you're good to go. That's all you need, a panhead screw. Or a flathead screw, whichever way you want to put it. Round top, panhead screw. So that pretty well lays it out. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. For use around the apiary, you don't even need to secure it. Any more than that. I mean, these guys put eye, hole, eye bolts over here, run bungee cord across the front. They use uh, gate latches, of course, screwing it in, but all these different ways they come up with to do it. Well, just take your instrument reducer and attach it to the back. Boom. I have here a wonderful robbing screen and moving screen. One of the reasons I wanted to show you, because, you know, maybe if all you're going to do is move it, well, maybe this is all you need. Or not even do that top piece. You cut this piece right here, you leave this solid, you put your piece of screen on here, this is set up to go all the way across, two screws to hold it in place, you've got a great transport screen right there. Elegant, doesn't stick out a whole lot, like so many of those other designs do. If you find a better design than what I've come up with here, let me know about it because uh, I think I, this is a great, great idea. And like I say, mostly it's easy to do quick if you have a table saw that you can just set the blade at three eighths of an inch and make all your cuts three eighths of an inch to lock it all together nice and tight. Oh, I should also mention that uh, you're better off giving yourself a slight play at the corners the 16th of an inch or so and if you want and all you have to do if you do that is take a little strip of wood and glue it on the end so that it overlaps things because you don't want to have to fight with this too much uh, I don't know about you but I've noticed that even my bees that heavily propolize everything up in the brood nest area rarely waste too much time on what's going on around the bottom board so these are usually pretty easy to pop out and of course, if you didn't, you can turn that up. You've seen me use my handy dandy uh, entrance reducer remover, my little T handle hook, and pop them out. Either way, but I think I did a good thing here. I think this is a terrific idea. Let me know what you think. And this is Rich with Beekeeping with Rich signing off. Be sure to like and subscribe and let everybody know about this great video. 
Have a great day, everybody. Bye.